Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome, friends. Third Sunday of Easter today. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, adult education after worship, Pathways to God. Um, second thing is, and this is advance notice, but in, on June 1st, we're going to be celebrating our um, um, spirit songs, which is a, a chance to um, engage in and, uh, and uh, celebrate uh, Canada's first people. There's more information on that in the bulletin um, and in the newsletter, so I invite you to uh, just follow that as we move into, uh, into the early summer. Also, um, next Sunday, April 20th, we have the larger gathering of the, the Toronto Conference Churches for um, Community Conversation on race, Racial Justice. I guess that's actually synod-wide, right, uh, uh, Celine? It, it is going on synod-wide, but um, we're just doing Toronto area. Here. Okay, yeah. okay, so that's Saturday. Um, and there is a, um, a process to sign up for that, and you can talk to Selena as well. And you can also show up. And you can also show up, of course. You can. <laughs> um, youth group gathers on April 17th. Um, we uh, like to keep the youth in our prayers. And uh, I would like to ask, are there any other announcements before we uh, begin? We need someone to do a sermon first Sunday in May. Helen's going to lead the service, but if anyone is interested in contributing that way, let me know. Otherwise, we'll make all Thank you. Christine, may I invite you to come forward for the land acknowledgement, please? Redeemer is bordered on the east side of our lot by Indian Road. This street name is a reminder of two things. One, that indigenous peoples who resided here used this as a trading route. Two, as the vague street name indicates, the settler society of which we are a part has historically had little interest in the lives of the indigenous peoples who share this land with us. As a small sign of Redeemer's desire to bring ourselves and our society into right relations with our indigenous brothers and sisters, we begin today by acknowledging that we worship and gather on the traditional lands of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Wendat. We acknowledge them and any other nations who care for the land as the past, present, and future caretakers of this place. In preparation for worship, may I invite you to turn to Thanksgiving for Baptism on page 97 of your hymn. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to, the, joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let's give thanks for this good gift. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We thank you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
I invite you to uh, remember your own baptism. <laughs> If you will please rise, let's sing our opening hymn, 377, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Will you join me in our Kyrie, which you'll find on page 184.
Let us pray. God of life and light, you embrace creation from the smallest particle to the great expanse of space. Help us to discover your mystery in all aspects of our lives, that we may be witness to the resurrection in our words and in our deeds. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, and may I invite you for the reading? reading from Acts. Acts chapter 3 verses 12 to 19. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own wonder at this? Or why do you, oops, why do you stare at us? As though your own power is of piety we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled he had for what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent therefore and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of God. Thank you. Let's sing together Psalm 4, the first eight verses. for the Gospel Acclamation on page 188.
Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do you have doubts in your heart? Look at my hands, look at my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bone as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and wondering, he said to them, have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and he ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms might be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it's written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. The gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. A few years ago, it was before COVID, so it must have been four or five years ago, my uh, brother Ted and I were on our weekly telephone call, and we both said, just sort of over top of each other or at the same time, I feel like I'm not learning anything new these days. We kind of laughed about that. But then a game began. We decided we would sign each other up for an online course of our own choosing, and the rules were simple. It could be anywhere in the world, but it had to be at an accredited university or a research facility, and it had to be a full course, i.e. it had to be a full three months in length, and the last rule, the person taking the course had to pass by at least 50%. Now, whoever had the lowest score had to pay for both courses, and they're not cheap. So he signed me up to a course at the University of California, Irvine in fluid dynamics and chaos theory. <laughs> fluid dynamics is hard for my brain at best and chaos theory added to the mix. It was just an intense course in mathematics. Now we had weekly lectures, we had bi-weekly tests, we had three papers that were peer marked uh, in the course and then we had a final exam. It was an awful lot of work. Um, but I knew I had beat him when I pulled a 73 in the course. But to be honest, I knew I had beat him the moment we signed up because I signed him up to a class conducted by CERN in Switzerland entitled Boundary Equations for the Event Horizons in Black Holes. <laughs> now, this is an interesting time, these five years that have gone by. At the time that Ted took that course, people still talked about data being lost at the event horizon of a black hole. I.e., if a black hole swallows something because of its massive gravitational pull, that thing is lost forever. People don't think that anymore. The line of thinking now is that no information is lost in the universe. It can change location, but it's not lost. So if a person is absorbed, say, into a black hole here, she or he would be dead. But the reality of this person, her history, knowledge, life force, can show up on another side of the universe 
a hundred million light years away without there being loss of information. Now there's no empirical data on this, there's no proof, it's a hypothesis, but physicists are talking today seriously about wormholes. <laughs> Why not? Wormholes are conduits in space-time that transfer energy simultaneously. There's no time required to travel from one spot to another. You disappear in one end and you show up simultaneously. Now, this is actually an important principle because the loss of data violates one of the principles that governs physics, namely that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only changed. But here's where the rubber hits the road for me, just as an ordinary person and also as a pastor who has an, a more than a passing interest in scripture, I feel like the work on quantum mechanics over the last century has moved us out of one worldview into another, albeit slowly. The old worldview and really the worldview that the church is, grew out of and is based on, at least in the last 500 years, is the Newtonian worldview in which there are causal relationships between objects. Now, Newton was born on Christmas Day in 1642. And he said that we can understand everything in the universe if we have a big enough observation platform, if we can see it clearly. Um, and from him, we have, of course, the laws of conservation of, mom of momentum. We have an understanding of the uh, precise uh, acceleration of gravity. We know that buoyancy is related to mass um, and the, uh, of an object and the viscosity of the fluid. But since the 19th century, when Thomas Young conducted his famous double slit experiment, our understanding of the world began to change. And that's where the shift went from light being a particle to light being a wave. We understand it as both. In measurement, it seems to display both characteristics. So that's the beginning of the quantum world. And what it does essentially is try to get below the nature of matter to look at the energy around matter, the energy that holds the universe together. I think we deserve to pause for a moment and talk about how strange our universe is. We know the dimensions of our existence we live in the largest four dimensions of existence. So we've got, you know, the space dimensions and time. Those appear to be the largest. Physicists think that there are 11 um, dimensions. The other ones increasingly smaller and curled in on themselves, um, somewhat like a fractal as you go in, it's completely perfect and it opens up and expands and shows itself, but on first look, you cannot determine shape or size or movement or direction or anything within that, um, it, within that fractal. So the universe, as best we can understand, is infinitely smaller in scale than it is infinitely large. And we know that it's infinitely large. So it's sort of b boggling uh, to the mind. Human beings, this is so crazy. So we think the universe gets down to 10 to the minus 32nd um, uh, in size, uh, and that the larger universe is 10 to the plus 30, it's 29 or something. It is a bit odd that we are, I don't wanna make a, go back to the Copernic, Copernicus's world where the human being is the center of the universe, but we seem in size to be struggling with exactly the same amount of dimension, both uh, great and small. Um, what we're finding is that we're losing predictability. It's harder and harder to understand the laws governing the world. It's not that they're not there and that we won't find them. It's just that right now we're in a period where things are sort of up for grab. 
And I would say this is where we are as a church as well. <coughs> I'm talking too much, I'm going to dry through it. So I wonder, and this is now just whatever, it's just me talking. Is it possible that the spiritual world, this minute world, is actually embedded, tucked inside us in other dimensions that we can't see, we can't understand, but which are fully operative and guide us? There's, it's certainly true that we're not just mechanistic machines that go about and do A, B, C, and D. We live in this world with an absolutely complex understanding of ourselves, of others, of the world around us, and we try to figure out how to live in that world. And we ask things like, what's my calling? Why do we even ask that? It does seem, if we were just matter, that we wouldn't even ask that question. And yet that's a profound question for, for, for all of us. So it's, have you seen that big tunnel they just built in Norway? It's like 24 kilometers through their mountaintop. The big, one of the biggest feat of human engineering on earth. We can carve 24 kilometers through a mountain and yet we can't precisely say, is there a spirit world? What is the spirit world? We talk about it, we feel it, but we have no idea what it is. So there's a way in which what is most meaningful to us is most hidden going inwards again into maybe all those dimensions. Um, if we are to look at, and again, I don't want to just sort of blindly equate religious ideas with scientific ideas because they're not, um, there's a word for it, but they're not. Um, they are, but there is a reality in which we see a process of life that grows with our own life. We see spring every year. We see um, forgiveness as a real thing between human beings. We see um, in our very fragile lives, we see love happen. So there is this undergirding sense of a world that's so delicate, so fine, but it still promotes our own growth, our own going forward. Whether it's tucked inside of us, whether it's external to us, I'm not sure. But there are a few things we know. If we're gonna just talk about resurrection for a minute, it happens to bodies. It doesn't happen to other things, at least that we know of. Um, and this just isn't in Christian culture. There's a, a concept in, um, uh, in, in ancient Chinese um, mysticism called the rainbow body and that's where at the point of death a body will essentially um, uh, uh, present itself only as light energy, the energy of, of a rainbow. Um, um, and there is in Persia there are stories of the return of people after the death. So for some reason that's in our culture. In the scriptures today, they talk about the disciples being afraid, is it a ghost? I think that's a really valid response to seeing something you don't understand or you don't know. It's a ghost, it's a, a demon, it's something like that. Um, it happens to bodies. There seems to be some fragility to it, but there also seems to be a little bit of punch to it, right? Because Jesus says, do you have anything for me to eat? And they give him some fish and he eats the fish. So. He seems to be able to, to handle that um, uh, part of life. Um, I just here want to say, in my class at UC Irvine, we talked about perspective. And let me just give you an example. Very close up, sitting on a sand dune, it looks like a pile of little tiny bits of matter. But when you get 200 meters away and you look at the same dune, it ha the, all that individual matter disappears and you see this undulating flow of sand that presents itself and in fact mathematically can be understood as a liquid. And if you go into space and you look down at that same dune, 
you can see the plume of sand coming in from uh, the water, gathering at the shore, spreading out into dunes, then into bare spatch patches, trickling off over here. From space, that same sand looks, appears, and can be treated mathematically as a gas. So, the point here is that perspective is the most important and the hardest thing to solve both in physics and I think in the spiritual life. Um, where we stand, how we look, how we see history, what informs our world, our own suffering, our joys, is part of how we will see the world and how we will go about our spiritual journey. And I think that even if quantum found a plausible equation for resurrection tomorrow, I don't think we necessarily buy into it unless we ourselves had some tangible experience, experience of resurrection in our own life. You see, the spiritual life opens itself up to people in different ways. Some people have absolutely momentous experiences of God. And some of us sit on the edge of our bed, dangling our legs, wondering what we're going to do today. <laughs> I'm not saying that the spiritual world is a free-for-all. I think it does require discipline to crack the code. But I'm saying there is a code, and probably the combination to that is different for each one of us. The deepest teaching in the universe is that individual consciousness seems to matter in physics, in spirituality, in everything. So I just want to remind you, please do not take your own experience for granted. Your world, your understanding of the most subtle movements of the spirit are in fact your lifeline here on earth. Don't go without your lifeline. Furthermore, the work that you do and are doing right now has never been done and never will be done again by another living human being. Take that seriously. That's a huge deal. I'm actually glad that physics is nudging us towards more respect for mystery, both in our understanding of the cosmos and in our understanding of common culture. Empiricism is so strict sucks the oxygen out of the room precisely because it's too small a story for us to live into. Quantum mechanics, like the great teaching of the ages, is utterly strange. We are part of something utterly strange. Our bodies and spirits are part of something that is changing all the time. Think about that. God may be changing all the time. That to me says there's always hope for a new future, a new resurrection, so to speak. I just want to end by saying, my brother pulled an 86 on the CERN course. So I ended up paying for both. It cost me 800 bucks to learn never to assume what the future will be. <laughs> Let's sing together hymn 939. It's on your handout. Touch that soothes and heals. Thank you. 
rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Help the Canadian government and governments around the world to close net zero emissions while ensuring a just transition that can benefit the most vulnerable. Give sight to eyes that are blind in the private sector to accelerate environmental action, including looking beyond their own operations and seeking ways to reshape value chains, industries, and policies. God of grace, hear our prayer. Oh God of creation, we are in wonder as billions of cicadas are set to surface in a matter of weeks as two different broods, one that appears every 13 years and another every 17 years, emerge simultaneously. The rare emergence of this many insects hasn't been seen in North America since 1803 and won't happen again until 2245. They will make their appearance sometime in mid-May. May we appreciate this for what it is, a unique natural phenomenon that you don't get anywhere else in the world. For such beauty, we are thankful. God of grace, hear our prayer. Oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who are moving, downsizing, leaving behind what they know, some in grief, some in hope, all in uncertainty. Especially we think of Ivy Chow, who has been a member of our congregation, and all who experienced the earthquake in Taiwan. She's still fine, I checked it. God of grace. O oh God, our center, love your people and encourage us to grow. Help the teaching ministry in our parish to reach out beyond our own walls to invite people into conversation and life and community. Move our neighbors who care for our green space, as we do, to make it a home for all. Give us purpose in our mission, we pray. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all people, it is your will for war to cease and peace to prevail. May leaders in the Middle East come to their senses so that life and hope might be fostered. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Oh, oh, that was quite good timing. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace together. everybody from Ingrid at home. Thank you. Peace, everybody. Peace, Ruta and Al and Violet. Peace, Ruta and Pastor Al. This woman who works so hard for us. Peace, God's peace, Pastor Al and Ruta. God's peace, Ingrid, Vicky. Oh, it's Violet. Violet. Oh,
Bless you all. Thank you. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, loving God, for the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ the Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, the earth, the sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy on page 190. <laughs> Thanks, God of all, through Jesus Christ, your own child, whom you sent in this end of the ages to show us the way back to you. He is inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. Here, taking on our nature and lot, he stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. Taking bread, he gave thanks saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. As often as you would share this with one another, remember me. So also after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, for all people. As often as you share this with one another, remember me. Now, as often as we share this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup and we give you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather us into one, all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your spirit so that we may build your reign on earth now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready. Please rise. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, 
that we may show forth your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Our sending song is 391, This Joyful Eastertide. <laughs>